Hey guys, hello and welcome to the Swedish Medical. In this video, we are talking about a very important topic regarding our neurology, that is the multiple sclerosis. But before I cover this topic, that is the multiple sclerosis, I want to make sure that you have an idea about what are the demyelinating disorders. See guys, if we talk about uh, you know the CNS and the PNS, both the CNS and the PNS they have what is called as the myelin. Now this myelin is something which will you know increase the conduction velocity or increase the transmission speed across the neurons, and it is important for the functioning of both CNS as well as the PNS. Now. CNS, you know that it consists of brain, it and it consists of spinal cord. So all the tracts that are within the brain or within the spinal cord, including the brain stem, they are included in the CNS. While the PNS, it will consist of the peripheral nerves, be these the motor nerve, be these the sensory nerve, or be these the autonomic nervous system. So we are clear. We have the CNS, we have the PNS. Both the CNS and PNS, the neurons they have myelin. Myelin makes the transmission or the impulse conduction very fast. And as far as the CNS is considered, we have the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. As far as the peripheral nervous system is considered, we have uh, what is called as the motor neurons. We have the sensory neurons, and we have the autonomic nervous system. Also, the cranial nerves they are also a part of the peripheral nervous system. Now, what happens in case of demyelinating disorder? Okay, demyelinating disorder. See, as the name clears, name you know name suggests the D refers to you know destruction. Myelin means myelin sheath, and demyelinating disorders are there for those disorders in which we have the destruction of the myelin. So, in which we have the destruction of the myelin. So, in the demyelinating disorders, we have the destructions of the myelin. So as I already told you that myelin is found in the CNS and myelin is found in the PNS. So therefore, the demyelinating disorders they may involve the CNS or they may involve the PNS. So if we talk about the demyelinating disorders which involve the CNS, by CNS I mean the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. In this, we have one of the primary example which is the multiple sclerosis. So therefore, multiple sclerosis is a type. of demyelinating disorder which will involve the cns that is the brain the spinal cord and the brain stem whereas if we talk about the demyelinating disorders which are involving the peripheral nervous system in this we have the gbs now the pronunciation of gbs is little bit controversial i call it as guillain bear syndrome okay because i read it somewhere the people were calling it as guillain bear and uh, therefore i call it as guillain bear in india i guess you know in my med school they will call it as guillain bear syndrome i don't know it is correct or it is wrong but you know everyone has his or her own way of pronunciation but the important thing is that you should always remember that uh, the guillain bear syndrome or the guillain bear syndrome is a demyelinating disorder in which the peripheral nervous system is involved also if we talk about another demyelinating disorder which is uh, you know uh, charcot mary tooth disease so the charcot mary tooth disease is a demyelinating disorder in which the peripheral nervous system is involved and if we talk about the central nervous system involving demyelinating disorder we have the central pontine myelinolysis or the osmotic demyelination syndrome and we have what is called as the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy so always remember you know multiple sclerosis central pontine myelinolysis and progressive multiple multifocal leukoencephalopathy these are the demyelinating disorders that will involve the cns and guillain bear syndrome and you know uh, the charcot mary tooth disease are the demyelinating disorder which will involve the peripheral nervous system now if we talk about you know there are other disorders in which the demyelination occurs and these disorders other disorders in which the demyelination occurs these are the krebs disease metachromatic leukodystrophy and adrenal leukodystrophy okay i will write them down we have we have what is called as krebs disease okay we have what is called as krebs disease we have what is called as meta 
क्रोमैटिक ओके मेटा क्रोमैटिक ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी एंड वी हैव समथिंग विच इज कॉल्ड एज एड्रीनो ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी सो एड्रीनो ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी मेटा क्रोमैटिक ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी एंड क्रैबेज डिजीज ऑल ऑफ दैम दे विल ऑल्सो कॉज द डिमाइलिनेशन वाइल क्रैबेज डिजीज एंड मेटा क्रोमैटिक ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी दे आर द लाइसोजोमल स्टोरेज डिसऑर्डर द एड्रीनो ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी इज अ काइंड ऑफ परोक्सीजोमल डिसऑर्डर सो वैदर इट इज यू नो क्रैबेज डिजीज और मेटा क्रोमैटिक ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी और एड्रीनो ल्यूको डिस्ट्रॉफी वट एवर द मकैनिज्म बी बट यू नो इन दीज डिसऑर्डर देर इज डिमाइलिनेशन सो वी विल टॉक अबाउट द मल्टीपल स्क्लेरोसिस इन ह्यूज डिटेल इन अवर सब्सिक्वेंट वीडियो बट इन दिस वीडियो जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट डिमाइलिनेटिंग डिसऑर्डर्स आर नथिंग but demyelinating disorders are the disorders in which there will occur the destruction of the myelin it can occur in the cns and it can occur in the pns if we talk about the demyelinating disorders which involve the cns in this we have the multiple sclerosis and we have the central pontine myelinolysis we have what is called as progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy and if we talk about the demyelinating disorders which are involving the peripheral nervous system in this we have the gbs or the gian bear syndrome we have the Char got mary tooth disease okay and there are some miscellaneous disorders like the crabbe's disease the metachromatic leukodystrophy and the adreno leukodystrophy among these the crabbe's disease and metachromatic leukodystrophy are lysosomal storage disorder while adreno leukodystrophy is a type of you know peroxisomal disorders so overall all these disorders they will cause you know the demyelination and the demyelinating disorders okay now before i finish this video just make uh, let me make a point very clear so that you know you never forget it and guys please believe me that the way i have taught hematology i will talk the whole neurology i will teach the whole neurology like this and i i am very passionate about you know teaching neurology in a really nice manner so just pay attention and you know watch each and every video if you want you know new, your neuro to be strong so if we talk about you know uh, our nervous system obviously we have the cns and we have the pns so guys if we talk about the cns in the cns the myelination it occurs or you know the myelination is done by oligodendrocyte always remember you know right from your first year towards your final year you will be asked this question by your professor like who does the myelination in case of cns so these are the oligodendrocytes which do the myelination in the cns so if we talk about the multiple sclerosis the multiple sclerosis targets these oligodendrocytes while if we talk about the peripheral nervous system in case of peripheral nervous system the myelination it is done by the schwann cell okay so it is done by the schwann cells and in case of the disorders which are involving the peripheral nervous system such as the gian bear syndrome okay the schwann cells they are involved okay so we have the involvement of the schwann cells and we have the involvement of uh, you know the oligodendrocytes and another important point which you know always have to be remembered always has to be remembered is that the optic nerve see guys optic nerve is a cranial nerve and as i have already told you the cranial nerves they come under the category of peripheral nervous system but here is an exception with the optic nerve see guys the optic nerve the cranial nerve second okay the optic nerve or the cranial nerve second is not an actual cranial nerve it is an extension of you know the brain white matter so it is an extension of the brain white matter just you know just like the tracts just like the fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus it is also a tract so it is myelinated by oligodendrocyte so by this i want to you know make it very very clear that in case of multiple sclerosis the cranial nerve second is involved and it should not be a point of confusion because the cranial nerve second is a part of brain and it is myelinated by you know the same cells which myelinate the neurons of central nervous system that is the oligodendrocytes so that is why the uh, optic nerve is involved so this is all for today's video about the basics of demyelinating disorders in the next video we'll talk about the multiple sclerosis in huge detail